Well, more on this, Taha Arvis joins me now from Istanbul. He is a financial columnist. Uh, so what exactly does the ratings downgrade mean for Turkey? It doesn't mean much as far as uh, the actual, the real sector here. Uh, the currency crisis that we've experienced in the last uh, 10 days um, has already uh, told the markets all they need to know about the current situation in Turkey. So this is just the ratings agencies, as always, catching up to reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. So well, on the one hand, uh, the ratings agencies have lowered Turkey's rating, but say it could be upgraded with certain economic improvements. Uh, what sort of improvements are they talking about? I think they're talking about fiscal policy being tighter, um, monetary policy being tighter, despite the, the already very high interest rates that exist in Turkey. Um, I think they've largely ignored the turnaround in the currency crisis that the Central Bank of Turkey and the uh, government were able to do. I mean, the Turkish lira appreciated by over 15 percent in the last few days. Um, so and the currency crisis seems to have largely been averted. So um, they kind of ignored that. But I mean, these ratings, ratings agencies, like I said, always play catch up. And it's a very subjective game that they're playing. So uh, I don't think normal investors will will, will lend much credit to their uh, credit rating. Okay. No pun intended. But yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Standard & Poor's is maintaining an outlook of stable, while Moody's changed its outlook to negative. So what, what is the difference? And it sound like, sounds like, um, from what you said, that it doesn't actually really even matter. Uh, it doesn't matter as far as investor perspective goes. I mean, there's either um, investment grade or non-investment grade. Uh, the issue here, unfortunately, is, and many economists have brought this up, um, it appears that Turkey's uh, investment rating is less than its peers that have defaulted on debt in recent years. So this is a problem, I mean, for the credit rating, ratings agencies, because, I mean, like, like you said, this is a very good good distinction. How could it be that you have one credit ratings agency that's such a, you know, has the world's best talent, et cetera, et cetera, has great financial models, and comes out with a stable outlook for Turkey, and then another that's right across the street comes out with a negative outlook? How can you have two diametrically opposed uh, re uh, readings of the Turkish economy if, if the ratings, ratings agencies themselves are not very subjective, um, they're, they're guessing, unfortunately. That's the problem. And, and it, it impacts people on the ground. And that's an issue for, I think, countries uh, globally. Mm -hmm. Right. So this could this have an impact on uh, the Turkish lira, which we've seen drop so dramatically this year? But then, of course, we've seen it rebound slightly this week. Do you think that it could impact the lira, which then uh, impacts the people of Turkey? Uh, I don't think the ratings cuts will have an impact on uh, the Turkish lira. Investors on the ground are looking for returns on their money. Ultimately, investors only care about making money. So uh, that's this is not ratings agencies coming in a week after this crisis saying, you know, the outlook could be either stable or negative, isn't going to do much. Um, more importantly, they're looking at uh, what is going to happen with this diplomatic row between the United States, how much of this is politics, how much is this, of this is Donald Trump trying to you know, change the agenda in Washington. That's what they're looking at. And I think they'll, uh, people will, will realize this, this, this is all politics pretty soon here. And investors that are already invested in Turkey will, will either continue or, I mean, as long as they make money, no one cares what the ratings agencies say, frankly. All right. Taha Arvis live for us from Istanbul. Thank you.